Now that we know how to balance these crazy redox reactions, we can go back and talk about how to get useful electric current out of a redox reaction. Now, this strip here on in the picture, it shows a, a copper solution and a piece of zinc metal has been placed into it. And this is what they call a direct redox reaction. If you wish to make elemental copper and have zinc two ions pop up in the meantime, direct redox reaction are awesome. They're usually really high percent yields, high efficiency. Often they don't take very long and stuff like that. You would quote unquote see the zinc disappearing. All right. Uh, it's not really disappearing. The zinc is turning into zinc two plus and the copper two plus ions are turning into copper metal. But it would look kind of like the zinc is disappearing. Zinc two plus is colorless. So you'd see the blue color go away and it would look like everything just disappeared. But in reality, the zinc two plus ions are floating around. Zinc is being oxidized. It's being turned into zinc 2 plus. Remember that things that are oxidized are also called reducing agents. Copper 2 plus, gaining the electrons, is being reduced. Copper 2 plus is also known as the oxidizing agent. So again, direct redox reactions, pretty awesome when it comes to synthesizing certain types of chemicals and elements. The yields are high, efficiency is high, all that kind of stuff. In this reaction, which species is the reducing agent, okay? And the reducing agent doesn't mean it's being reduced, remember. Reducing agent means it's being oxidized. Something that's oxidized will have lost electrons. It will become more positive as it goes from reactant to product. Remember, reducing agent, oxidizing agent, reduced and oxidized, they're only for reactants, not for products. If you look at this long enough, the nickel here is losing two electrons to become nickel two plus. Nickel metal is being oxidized. Nickel metal is the reducing agent, okay? So that's how you figure this out. You can use half reactions, whatever kind of system you want. This is a picture showing the zinc metal being placed directly in the blue copper two plus ions. And the overall reaction is you're making copper metal, zinc is turning into zinc two plus. Again, this is great if you wanted to make copper metal, but there's no useful electric current. And in the stuff we're gonna start talking about, having a useful electric current offers some pretty cool possibilities for different kinds of uh, mechanisms in chemistry. If you separate the oxidized and reducing parts into separate containers, all right, you can connect them through like a wire, some kind of system, to create an electrolytic cell. And the types of cells we're talking about right here are product favored. So these electrolytic cells are called galvanic or voltaic cells. And that just means you put them together and some electric current comes out. You get useful current from them, a useful battery. So a battery is really just a system of separated redox and oxidation cells. You put them together with some kind of mechanism so that the electrons can be transferred. Now, this picture is an example of one of these kind of galvanic or voltaic electrocells. And on the right-hand side, if you look at this carefully, you've got zinc metal, and there's also zinc ions in the solution, okay? And on the other side, you have a piece of copper and you have some copper ions. That's the sites of the reduction and the oxidation. Now we saw earlier that the zinc is going to lose its electrons. It's being oxidized and the copper is going to take the electrons and be reduced. So you'll notice as well that there's a copper wire. It's usually made of copper. There's other metals, but copper is relatively cheap. Some type of wire that connects the site of oxidation to the site of reduction. And if you look there, it shows electrons being moving from the right to the left, from the site of oxidation to the site of reduction. And if you've done this all correctly, your light bulb should go on. Because if electrons move through a light bulb, it basically activates the light bulb. That's a physics 101 thing you'll talk more about. 
So electrons are moving from the zinc to the copper side, and that's totally cool. But if the electrons keep moving from the zinc side, as the electrons go up the wire, you end up with more and more zinc 2 plus, all right? On the other side, as the electrons go into the copper metal, they combine with the copper ions to make pure copper metal. So what that means is that the zinc side is going to become more and more positive because more and more zinc 2 plus is going to be made. On the other side, the copper 2 plus ions are combining with the electrons to make copper metal. Now, to make copper 2 plus ions, you have to have some kind of counter ion. And in this example, it was a copper 2 sulfate. So as the copper 2 plus ions are used up, the left side becomes more negative. So you need some way to keep the negative and positive sides of the solutions happy as well. And what they use is something called a salt bridge. A salt bridge is literally like a glass tube filled with a kind of seaweed stuff, and it allows ions to move through. And so what happens here is the sulfate ions actually move through the salt salt bridge to the side with the excess zinc ions. The salt bridge literally transfers the ions through as well. So what happens is the excess sulfate, the excess negative charge, goes through the salt bridge to the side of the positive zinc. It literally is a way to transfer this negative electron energy. It started as electrons when it went from the zinc, it turned into zinc 2 plus. The electrons went over through the wire. They went down through the copper. They combined with the copper 2 plus ions to make the copper metal. Then the sulfates, the negative ions which were left over, they actually go through the salt bridge as well, and they combine with the zinc 2 plus ions, so everything is kept electrically the same. You're not having like an excess of positive and negative charges. If you didn't have the salt bridge, then the left side with the sulfates would become so negatively charged, and the right side with the positive zinc ions would become too positively charged. And the electrons, as they tried to escape the zinc, would actually come back down to the zinc 2 plus. But with the salt bridge intact, the ions keep moving. You literally have a current. And current in physics is basically moving electrons back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. So whoever discovered this battery and figured it out, my hat's off to them, man, because it's really, really cool. Now, I didn't mention, I covered it up there, there usually is a positive ion also moving from uh, the zinc side to the copper side. We're not going to be too worried about it. What I'm hoping you're seeing here is how someone developed a way to keep electrons moving. And that's really what electricity is. It's moving electrons, moving them around constantly through the system. So there's the picture of the zinc and copper system once again. Now, the right side here is where the zinc metal is turning into zinc 2 plus. It's the site of oxidation. Now, oxidation in a galvanic or voltaic cell gets a fancy name. It's called anode. And the anode is the site of oxidation. And if you look there at the little sign, it gets a negative sign. Negative just means that's where the electrons are coming from. So the site of oxidation is formally called the anode in a battery, and the anode has a negative sign to it. Other side, which is where the copper ions are taking the electrons to make copper metal, that's the site of reduction. And reduction sites in a battery are officially called the cathode. Cathode is where the reduction happens. And the battery sign is usually given as a positive. Electrons are attracted to positive sites, so that's where the electrons are going. If you get out like a double A or a triple A battery or some types of batteries, usually there will be a positive and a negative little picture on there. And that's what they're referring to. The positive is the cathode where the reduction is occurring. The negative is the anode where the oxidation is occurring. So you're seeing lots of combinations in your day-to-day -day world, which of course makes me as an educator happy, blah, blah, blah. Anions, the sulfates in this case, will move from left to right. As the copper two plus is used up to make 
make copper, you end up with an excess of anions. So the anions flow through the salt bridge, keeping them neutral. Usually there's a little bit of a cation, in this case sodium, going from right to left as well, just to keep the sulfates kind of in check. Um, either way, the negative energy, if you will, the negative anions are flowing through the salt bridge, making that moving current, the electricity that we talked about earlier. Electrons are traveling through the external wire. The salt bridge allows the anions and cations to move back and forth. You've got electrical neutrality, so electrons keep moving. This is the galvanic voltaic cell, and it's a pretty cool kind of device. And this overall idea works for all the batteries we have. There's different kinds of batteries, different components and stuff like that, but it's kind of cool to think about. It really comes down to oxidation and reduction. Remember that oxidation and anode go together, as well as reduction and cathode. And one way that helps me, oxidation and anode are both vowels. In the English language, A, E, I, O, U are vowels. A and O go together. On the other hand, reduction and cathode, those are both consonants, i.e. non-vowels in the English language. So R and C go together, O and A go together, good to go. Cool. If you don't like my consonants and vowels, which I totally understand, perhaps I can interest you in the red cat and the poor little kitty there that's cross-eyed. But anyway, red cat stands for reduction at the cathode, okay? And so like copper 2 plus going to copper, that's where the reduction is. It's the cathode. Maybe you like an ox. An ox means oxidation at the anode. So a red cat and an ox is a term that's used. Anything you want to use here is totally cool with me. Um, I just like showing pictures of cats. I'll be totally honest. All right. Two, two confessions of instructors 101. Um, you can also remember, of course, that oxidation is the reduction. Reducing agent reduction is the oxidizing agent. Of course, that totally helps. In this context, we're talking about pure oxidation at the anode, pure reduction at the cathode, etc., etc. Writing out a galvanic or voltaic cell can be kind of a big job. So there's a shorthand notation which is used, which I think is important to talk about. The um, copper 2 plus plus zinc going to zinc 2 plus plus copper in the shorthand notation can be written like this right here. And there's a reason why everything is written as it is. So first of all, in the shorthand notation, electrons are moving from left to right, from the oxidation to the reduction. Of course, that means the anode is on the left and the cathode is on the right. So the anode half cell would be zinc going to zinc 2 plus, and you can see it's a solid initially going to a zinc 2 plus solution, so water's the solvent. The cathode would be copper 2 plus, gaining two electrons going to copper metal. Um, and that's what the anode and cathode means. Now, the single lines and the double lines are important. The single lines are a phase boundary. So in the zinc to zinc 2 plus, you're going from a metal solid to a water-based solution. That's a boundary, a phase boundary. Same thing for copper 2 plus going to copper. The double line means the salt bridge. So the salt bridge connects the two and stuff like we talked about. So if you can use this shorthand notation, it does make your life a lot easier. Fat cat. I love cats, as you can tell. I really do. I'm using weird things from here. But anyway, fat cat means from anode to cathode. And that's another thing that you can throw in there. Electrons flow from the anode, from the site of oxidation to the cathode, to the site of reduction. Anyway, my cats are actually very large, large and I still love them. So, you know, no shaming and stuff like that. But maybe fat cat will help you understand redox. Then. Let's describe this shorthand galvanic cell using the notation shown. Okay, no problem. Electrons are flowing from the left to the right. That means the anode site of oxidation is the left. We would write copper going to copper 2 plus, and because we're hip chemists, we know it's a two electron process, all right? The 1.0 molar means the copper 2 plus concentration, 1.0 moles per liter. And we'll talk about how that can be important to us later on. Then there's the salt bridge, the double lines. 
the cathode would be chlorine gas going to chloride. And again, you can see that two negative ones on the chloride means that chlorine is gaining two electrons to become two chlorides. Um, the 1.0 atmosphere, that's the pressure of the gas. And the 1.0 molar for the chloride means, of course, it's one mole per liter in solution. This one also has a platinum at the end, all right? You need something to transfer the electrons to. And if copper doesn't do the job, and sometimes it doesn't, another really good metal is platinum. So this one has a platinum electrode. Platinum is relatively uh, invulnerable to a lot of chemical reactions. There are some things that will react it, absolutely. But platinum is a little better type of electrode to use in electrochemistry. It's able to do uh, more things without being degraded. And again, it's not totally invulnerable, but it's a better choice. And so in this case, that's what we're using. In a voltaic electrochemical cell, an oxidation occurs at an electrode called the anode. The electrons released at the anode travel through a wire to another electrode called the cathode, where the electrons are consumed in a reduction reaction. Anions are then shuttled through a salt bridge from the cathode compartment to the anode compartment. Otherwise, a net negative charge would build up in the cathode compartment. The negative charges move in a circuit through the cell. So this is another kind of galvanic or voltaic cell. It's a reaction that occurs when you put everything together. And like before, there's a site of oxidation, the anode. There's a site of reduction, the cathode. There's a salt bridge connecting them, stuff like that. But one of the things that's really interesting here, in the last example, zinc was going to zinc 2 plus and zinc was giving up two electrons and copper 2 plus was being turned into copper. In this reaction, Copper is being turned into copper 2 plus. So you can see up here the electrons are flowing this way, away from the copper. So copper here is turning into copper 2 plus, and the electrons, which go through the circuit and go down here, the electrons are going down to the silver side, and silver plus is becoming silver metal. And in the process, then, the anions that are excess on the silver side are going through the salt bridge over to the copper 2 plus side. So again, all the kind of things exhibit uh, from the last one are here, but notice that copper is reversed. Like copper was taking the electrons last time, making copper 2 plus into copper metal. In this reaction, the copper metal is turning into copper 2 plus. We're going to see that a voltmeter can be really helpful to us in a little bit. We're not quite there yet, but that's going to help us to see how the direction of these reactions will go. Here's a reaction, a shorthand notation, and I'd like you to tell me which species is being oxidized. Well, remember that in a shorthand notation, electrons always flow from left to right. So when something is being oxidized, it's creating the electrons. So this one is definitely going to be the zinc, the first thing listed. The silver plus is being reduced into, or thanks for playing, the gold plus on the right side is being reduced to gold metal, but it's the zinc is the source of electrons. Zinc is making zinc 2 plus. Electrons are flowing from the left to the right. Now, the sign of the battery terminals in galvanic cells is important. The anode, which is the site of oxidation, that's where the electrons come from. And the electrons where they're coming from, that's the negative sign, all right? And I think about it like negative and negative repel. Electrons want to get away from the negative side. On the other hand, the cathode, which is the other side over here, the cathode is the site of the reduction, all right? That's the site that wants the electrons, so that's going to be positive. Electrons in a positive galvanic cell will go from the negative to the positive side, and that's uh, kind of cool. It can be reversed for other types of things, but that's something we won't talk about quite as much. Electrons are again flowing from the oxidation to the reduction, from the anode to the cathode, and this works really well for galvanic and voltaic cells. But remember, there is another kind of uh, battery, another kind of system called electrolytic cells. Those, when you plug them together, nothing happens. <laughs> they actually have reversed signs. We won't talk about that too much, but I will show an example of it later if you're curious.